Hey fans, Sports for All fans, we have a treat for you today. The breakout star from the Netflix documentary Untold Crime and Penalties is with us today. It is good morning over in Connecticut and good evening to our viewers here in Manila. Hi, AJ, and uh, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, guys. Good evening. How are you guys doing? We're good. We're all right. And uh, with, with me today is veteran sports journalist Brian Yalo. Hello, good evening, everybody. It's going to be a good show, so stick around. All right, let's get to it. AJ, my first question to you is, how are the guys over at Section 102? Oh, man. <laughs> I tell you, God, you know, the, it, it's funny because there were some women in there, too, which is hard to believe. But um, they they uh, they were they were unbelievable. They were they were um, I tell people all the time they were they were just as important to the team as the team. And they uh, they really played a, a big role. And, um, you know, just that whole atmosphere here at, at our arena here in Danbury. And uh, they were just they were just unbelievable. And um it must have been very hard as an opponent, as an opposing player to, to come to Danbury because of them. Okay. And, you know, I'm curious. You, you were able to sign up one NHL player. And did, after signing one, what, were there ever, was there a thought of signing another one and perhaps another one and more NHL players? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean... Um, you know, really my job at the time was to put the best team on the ice as possible. So, you know, when the NHL had the lockout, unfortunately, yeah. um, you know, there was a whole pool of players that really weren't playing. So, you know, listen, you know, my, you know, our job was to put the best team on the ice and, um, you know, we definitely tried to get even more guys from the NHL, um, we did have a couple lower level NHL players that, that played a few games for us, but nothing major, but yeah, we definitely, we, we went after, um, you know, you, you gotta take your chances and, 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 you know, the worst they can tell you is no. So we, we just, um, definitely, we, we went after everyone possible. All right. AJ, was there ever a game that, that the guys did, did, didn't start the fight? Or was it every game that uh, that uh, the Trashers started the fights? You know, it, it, it's funny because every game there was something going on. You know what I mean? There was something going on every single game. Um, you know, more often than not, it was definitely RN that was instigating some stuff. But uh, no, there'd be times where, you know, other teams, you know, especially the second season, you know, our second season, because of everything we did the first season, a lot of teams went out and got some tough guys and, you know, they, they had to answer to us, you know, the second, the second season. So, yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it was definitely mostly us though, for the most part. You know, you, you used to play hockey yourself and unfortunately it was cut short by, uh, by an injury. And, you know, when you, when, when, when you had this team as president and GM, did it ever enter your mind to go back into the ice and be, be professional hockey's first ever playing president and GM? I won't lie to you. The third, if we had a third season, which unfortunately we, we, we didn't, we de I definitely, you know, because we were doing so much crazy stuff the first two years. And it's kind of like, okay, what else can we do to keep topping the things that we were doing? And one of the one of the things that we floated around was maybe me having one game where I'd go out there. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how good that would have ended up for me, but you know we would have went out there and tried to have fun with it. But um, you know, unfortunately, we didn't have that third year, so we we we. Uh, I don't know whether it would have happened or not, but we were definitely floating the ideas around. Would you have started a fight? <laughs> Oh, of course. I would have, I would have started, um, we would have had to start something for sure. And the players would have punched a president and GM of a club, right? Listen, I'm sure there was a lot of opponents that would have loved to be on the ice with me because I, I was always trying to get under people's skins and uh, things like that. So, 
But uh, hey, when you're on the ice, it's fair game. Okay. Um, the you know I'm, I'm also curious because you did a lot of um, creative and innovative stuff when you were president and GM. You know, after that whole thing was over, did you get any inquiries from other teams who maybe wanted you to work as their general manager or president or as part of their front office? Um, you know, so many people have asked me that. Believe it or not, no. I mean, um, it, it. I never even thought about that since over, you know, the past few weeks, people have asked me like, hey, you know, has any, you know, did anyone ever try to get you to be involved? And, um, you know, I never even thought of it before, but no, no one, no one ever really um, inquired about it. No. And would you be interested if an offer came up? Well, listen, you know, you never say never in life. You know, you, you don't know what opportunities may come. But um, I don't know. I mean, uh, it's one of those things where, you know, we had those two seasons and, um, you know, I kind of gained a good reputation with it. You know, I don't want to do anything that could, you know, maybe it wouldn't be as good if, if I tried to do it again. So you, you never know if, if uh, you, you never say never in life. That's for sure. Okay, let's say, let's say hypothetically there's a street fight between the 70s Philadelphia Flyers, the, the if you know the Detroit Pistons in the 90s, the bad boys, yep. and your guys. Who, you, do, you like your, do you like your guys' chances? Oh, wow, those are three tough teams. I tell you what, the Pistons are some big guys, though. Those guys are pushing seven feet, some of them. So that would be a t- that would be tough. But, uh, hey, you know what? Uh, the Trashers, I-, I like our chances for sure. But that would be an interesting um, – that would be like a good uh, pro wrestling, like, st- you know, steel cage match or something. That would be pretty fun. And um, if, if – um... Did you, did the, I mean, you, you had to, you know, when you found out that uh, your dad gave you a professional hockey team and was it overwhelming at first? And um, was it overwhelming? Oh yeah. It was, um, I was scared. You know, I was like, I, what am I going to do? You know, I was like, I don't know what I'm doing, you know? And it was like, um, I was definitely overwhelmed. I was very nervous about it. and. Um, you know, again, I, I never, you know, I was so young, I, I didn't know what to do, but, you know, I gave him my word I would do it. So, you know, you just got to do what you got to do and you, you start figuring some things out. You know, I thought the marketing ploy of getting Wayne Gretzky's brother was brilliant. Um, did you actually get to talk to the great one himself, even on the phone or? No, you know, we never spoke. I never personally spoke to his brother, Wayne. I did speak to um, Brent Gretzky's father, who's big in the hockey community, especially in Canada. But no, I never I never did speak to Wayne. How was that? How was the experience working with a brother at least? He was great. I mean, um, you know, it's sad because of his name, he's always going to be compared to his brother, but really, you know, he was a good player too. And, um, you know, aside from his name recognition, um, he was a great player for us. I mean, he put up a lot of points. Um, unfortunately, unfortunately about midway through the year, he started, you know, experiencing some injury problems, but I'll tell you, he was, um, a very solid player for us. Um, both on and off the ice. I mean, he was definitely a fan favorite. Before I turn you over to Brian, okay, we know about the fights during the games that your players started. Were there fights during practice among your guys? You know, that's a good question, but not that I know of. To be honest, we had a, you know, and that's surprising because, you know, when you're dealing with a lot of, you know, guys with that energy sometimes it rubs off in practice but I don't ever recall there being um any issues between teammates which is obviously a good thing but no I that's a good question I mean I wasn't at every single practice but I I don't I don't think I ever heard of of that before you know but that's a that's a great question I'll have to look into that but I don't (laughs) think there was ever an issue all right Brian 
Yeah, okay. Thank you, Vince. Before I do go to boxing, I want I've been writing a, a couple of hockey articles um as of late. And um one article I wrote recently was that uh, brawl between the uh, Washington Capitals and um what was that this was involving Tom uh Tom Wilson and oh, the and Rangers. The, yeah, and the Rangers, okay. Yeah. So I'm just curious with these physicalities of these fights. Um, uh, do they really do the fights intentionally? I mean, what sparks it? I mean, why they get into it? You know, it's 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 weird, and that's a great question. Uh, that's a great question, Brian. You know, it's it's such a physical sport. Mm -hmm. It's not as physical as it used to be, you know, but it's still, you know, it's such a fast game. And there's so many collisions, you know, and, and these guys are skating at such a fast rate of speed. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like on the highway, you know, could you imagine going on the highway? And even if you touch somebody, you know, it, it, it'll annoy you. Right. Yeah, so yeah. it's like these guys are are they these guys are skating so fast and even the little minor collisions, you know, it, it sparks a lot of. uh you know, it, it sparks a lot of emotion. And um, I just think, I just think with hockey, it's part of the culture, um, you know, growing up, you know, that, that physicality has just always been accepted and, and part of the game. Yes. But for the timing, I mean, I think just controversial timing that, uh, that, 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 uh, that brawl was a, a bit controversial because I think um, the Rangers, I got feel they got a raw, raw end of it. Yeah, no, a absolutely. I mean, it's it's one of those things is, um, you know, hockey, hockey players have a very long memory. So mm -hmm. it's one of those things where it's it's going to definitely spill over into this season. And um, I know the Rangers this offseason picked up probably the toughest player in the game and Ryan Reeves kind of mm -hmm. as an answer to this. Mm -hmm. So definitely when these teams meet, it's going to um it's gonna. It's almost like a to be continued story. It's definitely gonna yeah. spill over. Yeah, I mean, for sure they're gonna try to get uh, even uh, in the coming season. And that, correct me if I'm uh, wrong, that starts a rivalry in a different aspect. Well, yeah, definitely. I mean, a hundred percent. You know, if, if so, really the the guy on the Capitals that started this was Tom Wilson. His name mm -hmm. is. And yeah. Tom Wilson is a tough guy as well. It, my guess is whenever these two teams play, the smart thing to do is put both those guys on the ice and just get it over with, right? So it, it's it's it, it's almost like the it's almost like the fight's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. You, you got to put them on the ice and let them settle it right then and there, and then that usually settles it. Um, mm -hmm. You, you know, the problems in hockey start where, you know, if, if I do something intentional to, to Vince and now you want to get me back for it, mm -hmm. if I run away from it, it's just going to continue and continue. It's one of those things where in hockey, guys know they have to answer for it. And if they answer for it right away, that that usually stops it from escalating to something a lot, a lot bigger. Did you ever got anything like that? I mean, like really identify players on your team having this kind of rivalry with other teams. Oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, in the documentary, they, they actually documented, obviously the, the, um, one of our, one of our top players got his leg broken the, oh. the first, yeah. the first season. And it was a very cheap shot. So, you know, that spilled over all the way to the second season when, um, you know, the player Brad Wingfield who, who had his leg broken came back and, um, you know, he had to, he had to, you know, the, the guy that did it to him had to answer for it. And it, and it became, it was a, it was a huge brawl, but it's something in that culture that it's, it's, um, you know, you have to answer to the bell, you know? Okay. So, okay. You've been witness to it up to when does the, how long does this carry on or does it come to an end? Is there an end to it? Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, like I said, with the with the Rangers and Capitals situation, you know, what'll end it is when this Tom Wilson, he just has to he just has to fight for it. You know, he, he has to answer for what he did. And then that'll be it. You know, in hockey, it's funny. You know, it, it's once that happens, 
you know, it, it, the fans will never forget, but the players will get over it and they'll just continue on with, with uh, the game. All right. I just got to ask you, with this fascination with, uh, with physicality and, and uh, um, these fights, have you ever considered, well, are you a follower of the, of the base martial arts scene? Well, yeah, I mean, um, I'm, I'm in, I've, it, it's so funny. I got into professional boxing about mm-hmm. 10 years ago. And, um, you know, I've been involved with, I've been involved with boxing now, geez, over mm-hmm. 10 years. So mm-hmm. um, I'm not really too much into mixed martial arts, but, you know, I have a boxing gym. I see a lot of like uh, mixed martial arts, you know, they come in to work on their boxing. And, um, but yeah, I predominantly work with boxers, um, even some kickboxers, but, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's, uh, you know, I, I got into boxing almost, you know, kind of like a, a fluke. And um, I've been I've been with it, uh, you know, over a decade now. So it's 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 been fun. Okay, back to this. I'll save my boxing questions later. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, you know, in, in the documentary, AJ, there were there were kids watching. Um, and did you get feedback from parents who brought their kids saying that, you have all these fights at your games and it may impact on the children in a negative way. Did you, did you get any of that feedback? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, listen, you know, the way we played, it it definitely wasn't for everybody. You know what I mean? It wasn't, um, but we made it known to people. Like we told people like, listen, you know, our games, it's, it's, they're intense sometimes. So we, we, um, it's kind of like a movie, right? You know, you have rated R, rated PG-13, yeah. you know, so we, we made people aware that, hey, listen, um, do you want to bring your four-year-old to this game? I don't know, but, um, you know, we, we, we definitely, you know, we, we branded ourselves a certain way, and, and, but we were very upfront and uh, transparent with, with the fans. And, uh, but no, we, we definitely did get some feedback at the time for sure, but, um, you know, back then was different too. I, I feel like it was a little more accepted. I mean, you could never do that nowadays. I mean, it, it would never, it would never work. But um, you know, society around here was a little different back then, so it was a little more accepted. But we definitely had, um, we definitely got a bunch of letters from concerned parents. That's for sure. All right, and um, it's so 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 for, so your message to the parents then was bring your kids at your own risk. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, even section 102, we, we had a, a situation where um, if people didn't know, if people tried to buy tickets in section 102, we would say to them, hey, listen, I don't know if you want to sit here, you know, and, and we kind of, you know, we, we kind of let people, you know, you got to be, you got to be honest with people. So we, we were very honest with people so they knew what they were getting into. If, if, that injury didn't end your career. You think you would have gotten all the way to the NHL and um, which team would you have wanted to play for? Well, my favorite team growing up was the New Jersey Devils. So I would have loved that, but uh, I don't know. I was, a, I was an okay player. I don't know if I was, I don't know if I would have ever made it that far. You know, you, you never know, but um, you know, I would have liked to try to play in college when I went to, you know, um, college over here after high school but unfortunately you know it it didn't happen but you know I definitely would have tried but you know hockey I mean there's so many great players out there all different countries and um you know you could be good where you're from but there's so many there's so many players that um are all vying for the you know a few precious spots so it would have been tough for me but you know you definitely you you, I definitely would have tried did you ever entertain the idea because I saw in the documentary you had WWF superstars at your birthday party. Did you did it ever, ever enter your mind to have WWF superstars in trashers uniform and have them start fights or you know have them <laughs> have them in uh, you know complete uh, trasher um, uniform yeah. and helmet and all that and have them start a fight in an actual oh, game. I I would have loved that. You know, <laughs> I, if I could do that, I would have, 
wrestling, you know, wrestling, I, I still love wrestling. Wrestling was my first love. And uh, if we could have made a deal with Vince McMahon to do that, I would have loved to have The Undertaker in there. And uh, <laughs> it would have it would have been fun. OK, you know, I, I, I my next question is related to what I just asked, you know, because some of the fans who I saw in the, in the documentary, they're huge. They're huge guys. Did yeah. you did you ever think of having the fans, um, you know, lace them up, uh, wear Trasher's jersey, have them play, you know, just for the experience or throw a punch to an opposing player? Any of that uh, enter your mind? You know, Vince, I would I wish I would have known you back then because that's an idea I never thought about. And that would have been a great that would have been a great idea. I, I wish I. I got to tell you something. I never thought of that before. That would have been a, that would have been a, I wish I would have had that idea, but no, I never, I never even thought of that, you know, and uh, that would have been something special. Yeah. So I, I wish, I wish I would have known you then. That would have been a great one. Yeah, because you never know. Some of these fans may have a hockey background and, you know, hockey guards are yeah. huge. And, yeah, no, know, there's a bunch, a bunch of them definitely played, you know, you know, not professionally, but you know, they, they they could skate, you know, and I'm thinking of a few off the top of my head that could have done it. So, you know, I don't know. I never thought of that. I wish I, I wish I, I wish uh, that would have been a good one. <laughs> uh, what a shoulda coulda, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That would have that's a big one. I, I regret that now. I wish I would have had that idea. That's a good one. OK, you, you know, you you're you're a president and GM at the age of 17 then. And you probably had a crash course, a bit of a crash course in sports marketing, you know, with, with marketing your team and the players and all that. Uh, your, your practices over, you know, when you were managing, running that team, have you brought any of that over to your boxing promotion, to your, you know, to your boxing uh, business? You know, it's, when I first got into boxing, I thought, you know, again, I knew nothing about boxing when I started getting into it. So I thought I would be able to do exactly the same thing as the trashers, meaning come in, start to try to take over and just do what you want and things like that. But I, I, boxing is a whole nother world. And, um, you know, what I had to learn, what I had to learn real quick was, you know, when we had the trashers, we didn't have relationships with anybody, really. We just did our own thing. We, we weren't looking to be friends with anyone or do business with everyone. We, you know, we just got our schedule and we knew when we had to play and we would do what we wanted to do. You know, all, our only thing we cared about was winning. With boxing, you have to know people. You have to have good contacts. You have to have good relationships. Um, a lot of politics you have to work with. And you have to network, you have to go and meet people. Um, you know, it takes a lot of years to gain a good reputation with people too. So, you know, people in boxing need to learn to trust you, you know, and um, it takes years to build trust. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely different. But what we've done in my, you know, in my boxing gym, especially is we have a very close group like we did with the Trashers. Um, there's definitely similar, there's some similar things that we do but it's a whole different ball game. It's, it's a, it's a much different, it's very hard to take that trasher mentality into boxing because there's, there's so many different layers to this business. Would any of your boxers do well in a trasher uniform? There's a couple of them. Yeah. I, I think there's a couple of them. I don't know how good they could skate, you know, but uh, you know, if we had this boxing gym back then, it would have been a great, uh, uh, it would have been a great promotion thing for us. We could have definitely put the boxers in there. There's, there's a couple guys that uh, I think we have done well as trashers for sure. Do you have any of your boxers, up and coming boxers that, you know, the world should watch out for? Um, any, anybody young who, you know, was knockout power in both hands? Anyone we should watch out for? Well, uh, we, we, we actually have a, um, a heavyweight fighter. He's the current New England heavyweight champion that's fighting on the Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder undercard next week. So in, in Las Vegas. So, you know, he's definitely a, an up and coming guy. Um, we have a young professional. He's 11 and one. He's a 140 pound guy, Omar Bordeaux. Um, 
you know, we have a couple really big amateurs that are going to go pro soon. Um, you know, we, we have a nice group of group of guys and girls. Um, and, you know, you, in boxing, it's one of those things where you, you got to slowly build people. And, um, you know, but we definitely have a, a lot of uh, good talent right now. All right, Brian, your turn. Okay, so you talked about the boxing fight. I'm going to ask, what, who are you rooting for with Bean Tyson Fury and, uh, well, he's got Yeah, it, it's, it, it's, it's tough because, um, you know, I like both fighters, you know, and uh, it's one of those things where, you know, Deontay Wilder is the American, so it's kind of like you, you kind of want the American to win, yeah. but, I, but I love... I love the UK. I love their fans. I, I love uh, Tyson Fury. He's a great boxer. Oh, that's a tough one. Um, I, I, my gut tells me Tyson Fury is going to win. And my, my gut tells me he's going to win, but I wouldn't be, I, I'd be happy whoever wins. Cause I, I like both fighters for sure. Okay. So what can you say about us clowning around? <laughs> <laughs> who's who that Tyson Fury yeah Tyson Fury yeah he's he's funny you know I think um he's one of these guys where I think he he knows what he's doing and I think a lot of his antics you know his joking around and stuff I think it's I think it's to get under your skin yeah. and I, I think he does a good job of getting in the head of his opponent And, you know, in boxing, that's very important. If, if um, you know, usually guys think whoever's the meanest or the maddest, that's who's going to win. But it's usually the guy who's very calm, in control. Um, those are the guys that usually have the advantage. And, uh, you know, when he gets in the ring, Tyson Fury, he's he's very um, – he's very – you can see he's very in control. And uh, I think he um, he knows what he's doing, that's for sure. Yeah, I well, personally, I think he's a good fit to the WWE. Oh yeah, he would have been a great. Fit. Yeah, definitely. I I agree. I think I think he'll. I think he can make a lot of money there too, for sure. For sure. Okay. Speaking more of heavyweight, what's your take on what happened to Anthony Joshua? Were you, did you see that coming? Well, yeah, I did see it coming, only because Usyk. Um, I think. I think people in the boxing world really know how good Usyk is. And, um, you know, it was one of those, it was one of those fights where I got to tell you, I mean, uh, I like Anthony Joshua as well, but I think he's very one dimensional. I think he's, um, you know, Usyk, he is just so smart in the ring. It, 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 it's going to, it's going to take someone very special to beat him. He's a very special fighter. And I think the, the world really knows who he is now because of this fight. But in the boxing community, I mean, he is just um, unbelievably talented, very smart in the ring. He could, he could, he could brawl. He could box. He's very smart. Um, Anthony Joshua is a good fighter, but he's, he, he needs to switch up what he's doing. Um, I think he's too bulky. I think he's got too much muscle. Um, I understand as a heavyweight, you need to be strong, but he's very one dimensional. And I, I think he needs to be able to move a little better, work on his defense, but he still, you know, he can still do some big things going forward. So I, I hope he can recover from this. So there's talk that there, there might be a rematch soon. Do you think um, Anthony has enough time to make those adjustments you're talking about? If it was me, if I was guiding his career, I don't think I would take the rematch. I think um, I don't think anything's going to change. You know, that's um, I think what they need to do with him, in my opinion, is um, really take a step back and look at his training camp and figure how can we adjust what we're doing here. And, um, you know, maybe find another opponent for him, you know, a, a, a top level guy that maybe stylistically he can do better against and you know these fighters it, it really is a mental thing they have to get their confidence back and i definitely wouldn't take the rematch uh right now for sure maybe down the line in the future but not right now i think the result will be the same maybe a longer period of um time before yeah, maybe, maybe maybe in like a year or two you know what i mean they're both young enough in their careers where they can um they could come back and try it again 
And, and sometimes giving things like this some time will build more anticipation with the fans. So, um, but no, I, I definitely wouldn't take, I don't think anything would change if he fought him again right away. Okay, speaking of adjustments, I'm sure you've already heard about this. He just announced it last Wednesday. Do you think that Manny Pacquiao is permanently retired from boxing? <laughs> These guys, on permanently. <laughs> yeah, the boxers, for some reason, I don't think they understand what the word retire means. You know what I mean? I, I, I think they think retire means maybe they'll take a year off. Mm -hmm. I think that's what they mean, but uh, I don't know. It, it's tough for guys, you know, fighters – it's always in you. You know what I mean? Yes. For, for you to be a fighter, like, you know, Manny, especially, I mean, that's a real fighter. So especially guys from overseas, I mean, they fought their whole life and uh, you don't get rid of that. You know, you could retire, uh, you know, he could retire and do whatever he wants to do next in life, but he's always going to be a fighter in his heart. And that's just, it's just going to keep burning inside of him. And, and, I don't know, you know, you know, the never say never, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he gets back in there, but uh, you know, I'm sure it would have to be the right situation for him with the money and everything else, the type of opponent, but he's got nothing left. He, he has nothing else to prove, yeah. but um, I just think a guy like him, he, he's not going to be able to help it. I think he needs to do it for himself. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised Maybe 2023, you might see him coming back, you know, oh. and people are going to be, I could see it for sure. Even at his age? I mean, he's, he's going to turn 43. I'm not saying he should do it, you know, but I think these guys are just fighters and they don't know when to, they just can't help it. And uh, sometimes the money is so big that, it's hard, even with all the money he may have now. And I don't know, it's his business, not mine. But the money that gets thrown around in boxing, it's hard. It's hard to, even with all you have, it's hard to say no. So that's one thing is these guys, it's hard. It's it's uh, between being a fighter forever and, and the money, you know, you, you never say never. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if you see him, maybe not in 2022, but he might he might resurface. Okay. I, well, that's what that's the buzz going on right now. That uh, assuming that he does, his uh, presidential bid does not um, materialize, there is a chance he, he may speculate. He may he may go back to boxing. But yeah, you never know. Yeah, but the, the problem here is um, the debate that uh, goes along with that is his age. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Bernard Hopkins was able to do it. That's um, he's the guy that everybody's um, trying to single out. So, if yeah. you were handling Manny, would you advise him to fight until he can he can drop? I wouldn't, you know, I because I would tell him, you know, what else do you have to prove? You mm -hmm. know, what I mean, I mean, he doesn't. I mean, he's already a Hall of Famer. I mean, he um, again, I don't know his business, but I'm mm -hmm. assuming he has money. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, it gets to the point where, um, you know, it's like, how much more do you have to do? And, and uh, you know, it, I, I wouldn't advise it. No, I definitely wouldn't because, um, you know, life's too short. And, mm -hmm. and I think he needs to I think he needs to figure out his next phase, what he wants to do. Um, and, you know, he can still be involved in the sport in other capacities, um, but he doesn't have to you know, get in there. I don't, I don't see why he, he would have to come back for sure. Because the only, the only way they would bring him back is for big money against maybe a young prospect. And um, those guys are dangerous, you know, and uh, you know, and, and Manny was once a young prospect and you saw how, you know, how special he was. I mean, what I, I wouldn't put him in there against a young guy that has something to prove and uh, it could be very dangerous. How about these grudge matches that Mike Tyson and Oscar De La Hoya have been trying to do? Would that be? Well, that's some... my that's you know that's my point. These guys don't they don't understand. <laughs> I mean, uh, it, it's uh, you know I it's look it's easy for me to say don't do it or do it, but you know it's up to them. But I don't. I don't understand how they're allowed to do it. I don't know why the commissions are allowing them to do mm -hmm. it because listen, 
I understand, um, you know, they're legends. I understand yeah. that they're still in okay shape, mm -hmm. but something bad's going to happen one day yeah, with one of these true. fights. And, yeah. and it's not good for the sport because sure. something bad, and I don't want to see it happen, but if they keep, if you keep testing fate, eventually something is going to happen and it's not going to be pretty. Yeah, that's true. Just one punch it makes a difference, a big difference. I mean, Evander Holyfield a few weeks ago got mm. knocked out. I mean, yeah. why is he fighting in the ring? I don't know. Um, but it's it's not good. And and it's, you know, it, it's sometimes you wonder who's around these guys to tell them, hey, yeah, you should do it. You know, I mean, um, I would never advise someone to do that because, uh, you know, I get it. You want to do it. You want to feel like you're young again, maybe, or you want to make some money. But. For what? At what cost? Sometimes it gets a little crazy. All right. Okay, Vince, back to you. AJ, did you, did you see the the uh, pre pre fight the pre fight fight between Canelo and Caleb Plant? What What are your thoughts on that? I love both of those guys. So this is a hard fight for me because I love both of them. I think they're both great fighters. Um, I like the fact that Caleb Plant isn't scared. You know, a lot of guys that fight Canelo, you can tell they give him too much respect because they just respect him so much and they almost look beaten before they even fight him. Caleb Plant's not going to come to lay down. Um, ultimately, I think Canelo's going to win this fight, but it's going to be a good one for sure. I think this is going to be one of the biggest tests for Canelo in a long time. But, uh, yeah, as far as the pre-fight stuff, again, it, it's kind of like the hockey. You know, it builds up, you know. It, it builds up, and, and sometimes, you know, when you're face-to-face -face with someone that you're going to fight and, uh, you know, you spend, uh, you know, a, a few months preparing for this, sometimes, you know, emotions spill over. So, uh, you know, it's going to be an entertaining fight for sure. And I read there are a couple of Danbury professional hockey teams now. Um, yeah, would you would you consider getting the guys back together and challenging these teams to a fight? I mean, a game, not a fight, but a, a game. <laughs> well, listen, you know, a, a lot of the trashers they're old guys now, so I think they would. I think, um, I, hey, listen, they would prefer a I, fight I, than a game. Yeah, probably <laughs> we'd have to go for a fight, but uh, no, I mean. Listen, you know, the, the guys here in Danbury now, they're, they're great people. You know, the, the owner's a great guy. They, they always, um, you know, they've always paid respects to us, kind of paving the way for the yeah. Danbury hockey. And uh, they got a nice team. I got to tell you, I went to a game um, right before COVID happened, two years ago almost. We went to a game, and it was fun. We had a good time there. And uh, they got a nice team. They got a, they got a good organization. But uh, – you know, the trasher guys, they're old now. So I, I don't know on the ice, it, it might be a little tough for them because uh, they, they, they're, uh, you know, it's not like boxers that keep coming back. These guys, when they retire, they retire. When, when, you, when you watched a couple of their games, did it bring back memories? Did it become nostalgic for you? Oh, absolutely. I mean, just being in the arena, you know, you can – you know, I could look at parts of the ice and, and relive things that might have happened or, you know, sometimes a big goal sometimes, you know, ab absolutely. Anytime. I mean, I don't I'm not in there a lot, but anytime I end up in the ice arena there, it definitely um, brings back a lot of memories for sure. And would if if you have kids, AJ, would would you allow them to get into hockey or boxing? Well, I don't know about boxing. I mean, maybe maybe to learn, you know, I don't know about actually competing, but hockey, sure. I mean, if they want to do it, um, hockey's a, hey, listen, all sports, I think sports are great for kids, you know, but, um, you know, whatever they're interested in. But uh, boxing, that would be tough for me to let, you know, I don't know if I'd, I'd like that. They can learn and, and hit the bag and stuff, but uh, I don't know. And that would that would be tough to, to watch them try to box. That would be rough. The past two years have been very challenging to be a professional boxer or professional athlete. 
how have you dealt with your boxers from a from a mental stand standpoint? It's been very tough. I mean, when when you know COVID started here, you know we had to shut the gym down for like seven eight months. Um, you know, guys would be trying to sneak in to work out. I'm like, no, you can't. You know, they're watching us, so it's tough. You know, there's not a, there wasn't a lot of events going on. Um, boxing in general is very hard to keep a guy motivated because it's such a it's such a demanding sport. And there's no set schedule. So sometimes you'll have a fight lined up and then you won't. And then may, you, the next one might not come for six months. So it's tough. And then when, with this COVID stuff, it's been, um, it's definitely been a struggle. But, um, you know, slowly but surely things are getting a little better now, thank God. And, um, you know, hopefully, hopefully things can start rolling again. What was your biggest takeaway or learning from the whole Danbury Trashers experience? I would say, I would say that what I learned from it is sometimes it's good to not have experience with something. If you have a dream, if, if you have a chance to do something, um, even if you don't feel prepared, you just got to be ready for the opportunity. And, um, you know, take it. And you know what, no matter what happens, you know, you, you go and do the best you can and you can, you could, you could, um, you could develop something special. You just have to have a passion and um, you may not have the skills, you may not have the experience, but if you go to work every day and work hard and, and you're passionate about it, you can, you could do something. After if, if the Danbury treasures had war seasons and maybe if you had more seasons, you would have won maybe a several, a few championships, titles. Would would the ultimate, ultimate, the an NHL franchise in Danbury be part of a, a dream of yours? We definitely would have won that third year. I know if we had a third season, I feel like we would have been the favorites to win it all. Um, listen. I definitely think Danbury can accommodate a professional franchise. Um, you know, uh, well, it, there is a professional franchise. I mean, like an NHL franchise. I, I definitely think we have a fan base. Um, that would be amazing. I mean, I, I, you know, it would be, it would be a dream, you know, obviously, but um, you know, I don't know if it's possible. We're so close to New York city, you know, New York has a few teams, you have Jersey, I don't, but I definitely, I definitely believe Danbury has the the base where you could bring in an NHL team, hundred percent. All right, Brian. Well, I, I want to ask um, your take on these YouTubers. I mean, the new fights getting into the boxing and then facing, well, except for Mayweather, they've been facing fight a fight sport from a different niche. What's your take on that? What's my? I'm sorry, I lost you there at the yeah. end. What? Um, what's your take on well, these YouTubers like Jake Paul, um, Logan oh, Paul? Oh, yes. So, what? Well, what's your take on that? You know, listen. It's there's two sides of a coin, right? So I got to tell you something. Ever since Jake Paul started boxing, I get more kids that come to my gym trying oh. to box. It's very weird. Um, it's a, it's a different world. It's a different generation. These kids today with YouTube and everything, that's who they look up to. Mm -hmm. um, it's crazy to me because it doesn't make sense to me, but you know what? Boxing is a business first and then a sport. Yeah. If you could bring, listen, if, if your partner Vince decided to go pro and he could bring a million views with him, he'll get on a show next week. You know what I mean? Boxing is funny like that. You know, really, it's a business first. And, um, you know, guys like Jake Paul, whether you, people like it or not, they bring a lot of money. They bring a lot of viewership. Mm -hmm. And that's what boxing is about. And um, it's not fair for, like, guys, like, that I deal with in my gym mm -hmm. that, you know, have to scrape and crawl to make a few dollars and, but life isn't fair sometimes. And um, you know what? Unfortunately, 
that's just the way boxing is is constructed and and boxing unfortunately lets anybody in you know i mean tomorrow i couldn't wake up right i can't wake up tomorrow and decide i want to play in the nba Mm -hmm. i can't but tomorrow i could wake up and get a boxing license and try to get a fight and i could get one it's the weirdest sport in the world Mm -hmm. because um anything can go anything Mm -hmm. happens but um i don't know if it's bad for the sport with the youtubers because um I think it brings different demographic. It brings different viewership to the sport. And there's people that want to try it or want to get involved. From a business point, I don't think it's bad. But also, I do understand why it's tough for for boxers that have been doing it their whole life and are struggling. I can understand why that that that's upsetting. Yeah. Well, well, um, well we asked, basically, I have asked this before. The business side is good. I mean, if you look at it, it's good for the sport. But yeah, it's bad for those who are actually very bad. It. It's it's uh you know what it is? It's discouraging because it's like, you know, you I got guys in the gym that train 24-7 mm-hmm. uh all year. Mm-hmm. And you know, sometimes they make two thousand dollars in a fight. These guys come in and they're making millions of dollars. It's, it's a tough pill to swallow. Yeah. But, you know, what I try to do with the guys and try to explain to them how it works, I try to explain to them the business. I try to explain to them, listen, it may, it, you know, anything is what you make of it. So I say to them, maybe it's not fair, but how do we take this and use it to our advantage? How do we market it, you know, and, and what can we learn from what these guys are doing? And, um, you know, a lot of guys are trying to market themselves more now because they realize, hey, you know, I may have some skills, but people got to know who I am, you know, and I tell these guys, you got to go on podcasts, you got to put yourself out there. That's how people learn who you are. Well, well, funny, you should say that. I mean, there are um, some boxers who ironically move to MMA, um, like Clarissa Shields. Now she's in MMA. What can you say about that? You know, it's so weird because um, ever since Conor McGregor fought Mayweather, Mm -hmm. you see so many. I've seen a lot of MMA guys try boxing, and I've seen boxing people try MMA. Mm -hmm. So, you know, boxing is technically a mixed martial art. So it's one of those things where I think both of the worlds are, are kind of colliding a little bit in a good way. I think you got guys that, um, you know, and girls that realize they could probably do both. And uh, yeah, I mean, I know a boxer personally um, who lives in Massachusetts, who's a good boxer, but he's going to try MMA as well. You know, and that's one of those things where it's like anything else in life. You got to go where there's opportunity. Um, you know, a lot of these boxers, if, if there's a wait time to box, they may say, well, why wait when I could go and try a f- MMA fight, make a few dollars and it'll keep me keep me active and keep me sharp. And I've seen it the the other way around too. I've seen MMA guys, um, especially in the amateur ranks. There's not a lot of amateur MMA stuff in boxing. And here in the U.S., there's a lot of amateur boxing. So a lot of MMA guys who are like not pros yet, they want to stay active. A lot of them come and and they try you know amateur boxing, and you know it, it's a way for them to stay sharp and stay active. One MMA, former MMA fighter that's been surprisingly doing good is Anderson Silva. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, like I said, boxing is a huge part of, you know, if you watch guys in UFC or MMA circuits, you know, obviously you got to learn, you got to know how to box for the most part. You know, at least you should. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, a lot of these MMA guys, you know, it translates over good to the boxing world for sure. Okay, so well, back to boxing. <laughs> There's this uh, this guy. Um, I'm sure you're very familiar with him. He recently returned to action after getting sidelined, brut- brutalized by uh, Canelo, Callum Smith. Yeah. So what? Can, that I mean, when when I saw the video uh, on how he won, personally, I was shocked. 
you know, those, those UK guys, those guys in England, they're so tough. I mean, um, they are, they just live for boxing. You know what I mean? And, uh, they're not going to get discouraged. You know, it's funny. It's, um, boxing is one of those sports where I realized when I got into boxing, how, where you're from really plays a role into how you are as a boxer, like, Americans to me, if an American loses, they're they don't know how to handle it. I'll be honest with you. When an American loses for some reason, they have a tough time handling that. Yeah. Guys in Mexico, the UK, uh, Puerto Rico, you know, the Philippines, mm-hmm. you know, that doesn't discourage them. And uh, you know, especially guys in the UK, I mean, I've seen guys come over to America, they have success. Sometimes they don't, but it doesn't stop them. And uh, I think it's just part of the culture. I mean, uh, over there in the UK, I mean, you know, there's parts of the UK where boxing is everything and, and it's, they're just, they're just tough guys. And um, so I'm not surprised, you know, guys like him that come back and have success. It doesn't surprise me because they're just, um, it's a different world over there. Okay. So, Given that performance, do you see a potential rematch with Canelo? No, I don't think so because I don't think Canelo, you know, I think Canelo is, you know, I don't know what he would gain from it. You know what I mean? I know for for Caleb, I'm sure he would want a a chance to redeem himself. Mm -hmm. But the way the business of boxing is, you know, a guy like Canelo is going to say why, you know, so I don't I don't see it. But Mm -hmm. you like I said, in boxing, you just never know. Maybe it depends on his next fights. I mean, if he yeah, captured absolutely. attention. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so how about tri- um, Glo- uh, Triple G and Canelo? Do, do you want to see another fight like that? You know, I, I like, uh, you know, again, I don't think Canelo is going to be that interested. I think Canelo wants to see how many belts and weight classes he can win. I think he... I think, I think the triple G thing is done for him. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I think it means more to triple G than it means to Canelo. Canelo is in a spot in boxing. Everyone wishes they could be in. He -hmm. can decide what he wants to do. And, um, you know, he paid his dues, you know, he came up, he had to take tough fights early on. And now he's kind of in the situation Mayweather was in at the end of his career. He could kind of call his own shots he can decide where he wants to fight when he wants to fight. And, um, you know, I don't know. I mean, listen, anything's possible. If the money's right, I think guys will consider it, but I don't know if the money for that fight again would be as big as it was, you know, when they first started with each other. That's true. All right. Vince, back to you. Vince. I think he's, Vince, are you there? (laughs) Okay. He's not there. (laughs) Oh, he left us. Okay, no, he, he's hanging. Anyway, okay, so so Canelo. The, so you think Canelo is not the next big thing? I mean, compared to to the other fights right now, he's the one lording over in that rank. Yeah, I think Canelo right now is the face of boxing. You know, he's just you know right now it, it's he kind of can call the shots. He kind of um, you know, and he's you know what I like about Canelo is that he stays active, like he fights three, four times a year. Um, You know, I think that goes back to what we're saying, where guys are from, you know, Mexican fighters are usually guys that fight a lot and they stay active. Uh, You know, Mayweather used to fight once a year, right? So Canelo, you know, he gives fans what they want and and, um, he's fun to watch. you know, I know over here in America, people are more excited because he's starting to speak English now. Mm-hmm. So when he does interviews now, you know, people, you know, hear him in English. So Canelo's a very smart, very smart man. He's got a good team around him. And uh, I think he's just going to continue to, you know, eventually he's going to get older and eventually he's going to run into a young guy that, you know, like he used to be. But uh, I don't see that anytime soon. Okay, let's. Go to a different division. It's back to Manny Pacquiao. Um, for now, he's retired. Who do you think would be the, the top name in, in that division right now? Oh, God. Uh, you know, 
They got uh, in America. They got Earl Spence. Mm -hmm. He's a very good fighter. Very, yeah. very strong fighter. Um, you know the 135 pound division, which I know Manny fought out at one point. I mean, that's a hot division right now. I mean, there is like, I know in America alone, there's like five or six top guys that um, you know, are all going to be on a collision course with each other at some point. And it's going to make for some fun fights. And, uh, you know, that weight class is always fun to watch because they're, you know, guys, they throw a lot of punches, they're fast. Mm -hmm. So that's always a fun division to, to watch. Yeah. yeah. There are a lot of uh, names to look out for there. And how about um, Ugas? I mean, how, how big is this uh, win over? Well, right now he has that distinction of being the last fighter for now that yeah. uh, fought Manny Pacquiao. I mean, what does this do to his career, to his popularity? Yeah, I mean, it definitely, listen, anytime you fight Manny Pacquiao, your stock goes up. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, when you fight a guy like that, whether you win or lose, to have that on your resume is, is incredible. Mm -hmm. And Ugas, um, you know, he did well. Obviously, he had a good night. And um, I think it's only going to help him going forward. Um you know, and, and he'll have a lot of say now, too, you know, because, you know, when you beat a guy like that, now you can kind of dictate, hey, you know, I, I need a little more money for this next fight. You know what I mean? So that's how boxing is. It's supply and demand like any other business. And right now, um, you know, he holds a lot of cards and he can he can, um, you know, it's 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 a very good situation for him. So you're, uh, AJ, uh, you're the kind of guy that I see who love, wants to see fights that really engage, right? Okay. One of the fighters that most people don't understand is uh, Floyd Mayweather. So um, who, who opts for the defensive thing and that's around. What's your take on that? Well, listen, I think Floyd Mayweather, <clears throat> you know, I think he has extreme skill. Um, very great. Yeah, listen, he, no matter how people feel about him, he's one of the best boxers ever. Um, is he my type of boxer? No, I don't enjoy his style, maybe, but it worked for him. Mm -hmm. I think where Mayweather is smart, and I tell people this, is um, he developed almost a professional wrestling character to himself. Mm -hmm. And what happened is people wanted to see him lose so bad that people would pay $80 to watch him fight and run around the ring mm -hmm. and maybe throw 10 punches, but you'll still pay because yeah. you want to see the guy lose. So I give him a lot of credit because I don't think he gets a lot of credit for his marketing. Mm -hmm. And I think he is very smart the way he went about his career. Um, don't get me wrong. Very skilled fighter. I mean, uh, you know, great defense um fast did i personally watch to watch him fight no i i didn't really enjoy watching him fight but i enjoyed everything that went around it with him you know he had a lot of storylines mm -hmm. very wrestling like to me mm -hmm. and um you know people paid they wanted to watch him either win or lose but people still paid so he's very smart the way he went about his business is um very smart. And you know what? He didn't take a lot of punishment in his career. Yeah. So, so thankfully for his life, he's not dealing with the after effects of a lot of other boxers, unfortunately, when they retire. Okay. So Vince, are you okay? <laughs> I'm going to run out of questions already. <laughs> okay, back to you. All right. AJ, do you follow bare knuckle fighting? You know, not really, but it's it, when I was at a fight recently, a boxing event up in New Hampshire, um, there was a guy that I know who's a heavyweight boxer. He's got like only three fights that said he was going to try the bare knuckle fighting, I think somewhere in Florida or something. But uh, no, I, I never personally have seen it. Uh, you know, it looks crazy, but, you know, people, you know, when it comes to fighting people, uh, especially in this country, they love conflict. So any type of fighting, it, it seems to sell over here. Yeah, I think a couple of your players would do well in bare knuckle. Oh, well, yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, you know, like I said, if all this boxing stuff was going on back with the trashers, they, these guys could have made some good money all different ways.
Would you would you recommend it to your boxers to to try it? No, I mean you know I, I'm to be honest with you when it comes to boxing. Well, I shouldn't say no. I, I you know it, at the end of the day it, it's their decision. I I try to be realistic with them. Um, you know, fighting in general is a very tough tough sport. Um. You know, unfortunately, in this sport, you see a lot of desperate people trying to do it. And that's tough for me to watch because, um, you know, you don't know what the repercussions are going to be later on in life. You know what I mean? Um, but listen, you know, it's one of those situations where you really have to know the situation. Um, you obviously don't want to put your, your guy or girl in a position where they're overmatched and could get seriously hurt. Um, obviously that could happen regardless, but you just got to be smart. Um, and you know what, like I said, I, I hate to say it, but money plays a factor. I mean, if it's a type of fight that can change your life or put you in a better position where maybe you don't have to fight anymore, then maybe you can discuss it with them. But, you know, the, some of the pay for some of that stuff, it, you wonder what it's really worth sometimes. Okay, we have a few minutes left, AJ. Last question before uh, before we wind up. If, you know, the trashers, if you had to do it all over again, aside from the WWF and getting the fans to start fights on the ice, what, what else would you, would you redo? Um, that's a great question. I, honestly, I don't think there's anything I do different. I, I got to be honest with you. I mean, um, you know, like I said, back in those days, I mean, look, if it was 2021, it, things would have to be a lot different. But back then, I don't think I would have changed anything. Uh, I don't think I would have changed anything. There might have been a player or two that I wish we would have gotten. Um, but other than that, I, I don't think I would have changed anything, to be honest with you. Sorry, one more question. AJ, if, if you if you had the team and you were a little bit older, would 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 the style be different? Would would it be more physical rather than fights? That's another great question. I mean, had I been a little older, it probably would have been similar, but would have been that crazy? I don't know. And, and you know, Vince, it's one of those things where it depends. There's so many variables, you know. Like I said, hockey in 2004 and 2005 were, was a lot different than now. Um, you know, it was a much more physical sport. So, but had I been five, six, seven years older, it might have been a little different, but I, I think it still would have been pretty crazy. Probably not as crazy, though. All right. On that note, AJ, thanks. Thank you so much for your time. We know you're very busy. And... Um, you know, good luck, good luck with the boxers. And, uh, you know, we, we hope there, there are hockey opportunities that open up for you, whether management type or front office. Well, I appreciate it, Vince. And, you know, like I said, everything in life is so random. Sometimes, you know, you just don't know what's coming. So, you know, you're always open to any opportunity. Any final words to our viewers, AJ? No, thank you guys. And, uh, you know, thank you for the support. If you haven't watched the documentary, uh, definitely check it out. And, uh, uh, you know, hopefully maybe we could visit out there sometime. All right. Thanks for your time, AJ. And, uh, and uh, stay safe. Thanks thank you. Jay. You guys too. Thank you guys. Thanks for the opportunity. And that was AJ Galante, former president and GM of the Danbury Treasures, now a boxing promoter for the last 10 years. And uh, Brian, any final words to our viewers? Well, I, I got a lot of information from AJ and I hope that those who are watching or what are gonna watch this, um, hopefully you enjoyed it. There were, those were a, a lot of very interesting insights from AJ. Thank you, Vince, thank you. On that note, another episode of Sports for All is over. Next week, we'll be guesting Haley, I forgot her last name, but she's, she's a bronze 
Canadian Olympic bronze medalist in canoe. And Brian will once again join me to find, find uh, more about, about Haley and uh, canoeing and the sport of canoeing. So good night, everyone. Stay safe. So long. Night.